Hi everyone. Um, we want to develop machine learning models that um, are so efficient and so accurate that we can use them to predictively um, screen the behavior of matter at the atomistic level. These machine learning models can be trained. We showed that that works uh, using quantum chemistry results just as well as experimental results. So we formed a team where we can do experiments and quantum chemistry simulations to very high accuracy and precision. And we also have um, machine learning experts to train these models. Um, <clears throat> now, this is a really crucial step uh, towards this uh, overall goal to gain digital control of matter because uh, you have seen all the Chematica presentation uh, yesterday. Uh, the number of possibilities is really combinatorial and if your computer program is incapable of reliably screening these options, uh, you are in bad shape if you afterwards want to realize these materials in, in the real world. Now, uh, one of the possible applications which we find very attractive is to use these tools to screen large spaces of molecules um, to find uh, interesting molecules. And uh, one target is um, shown here. This is important uh, for aging. Actually, you all suffer from this. Um, <coughs> oh, sorry, that was not intended. <laughs> um, <clears throat> these are two amino acids that occur naturally in proteins. I'm holding the, the backbone, so my arms, my arms are the, the backbones of two different proteins. And uh, you have lysine and arginine, they condense together with glucose to form something called an advanced gly glycation end product. This uh, molecule covalently bonds two different proteins in the extracellular matrix. It contributes to aging. It's one of the seven uh, very well-known factors of contributing to aging. This is a covalent bond and we'd like to break it, right? You could uh, tackle this. But you need a molecule that will bind to this selectively, right? Now, there are many molecules around. Now, what do you think how many molecules there are? 10, 10 to the 60 is a conservative estimate, right? So just think about this. Yes, there are many more. So, and we need rapid methods to screen these, to score these, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, if we don't have these methods, there's no hope that you will find this just by chance, right? Um, now, did I forget anything? I don't know. We have a fantastic team. Everybody you need for this is there. Uh, we have data sets. Uh, we want to do this adaptively, of course, in a smart way, not just by screening, right? Once you have these tools, you can use them in, in optimizers or so optimization algorithms that explore this space uh, more efficiently. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what else I, sh I should say for this. We, we don't need money. We, we have the people. <laughs> we, um, I mean, of course, you could always use money to scale this up. Um, we, um, yeah, I, I think I mentioned that we want to hook this up also with experiments, so not only quantum simulation, but also experiments. So you can imagine something, it was mentioned earlier with AI, that possibly we could also discover new laws of, of, of physics, so, so extend the, the quantum mechanics uh, if we find regularities in, in these experiments that do not account, that are not accounted for in, in conventional quantum uh, mechanics approximations. With that, I'm, I'm done. Uh, if you have questions. Yeah,